and I can define a north and a south pole for that solenoid. Now I have a solenoid here, it's not, uh, it doesn't have any current going through it right now because I haven't pushed the button. When I push the button, conventional current's going to come down this lead, it's going to go around this solenoid this way. That's going to make this side here with the black lead the North Pole. Okay? Now, if this is the North Pole, it should be repelled by the North Pole of this bar magnet, and it is. Now that means that the other pole should be attracted to this North Pole, and it is. The South Pole, on the other hand, should repel this red end, and sure enough it does. So this hanging solenoid acts exactly the same as if I had just hung a bar magnet from a string and allowed it to rotate like a compass needle. This solenoid acts like a bar magnet. Or more importantly, this bar magnet acts like a solenoid. Why would that be? Why would that be? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a hunk of iron. And we're just going to look at a cross section of it. And you remember that I said last day that every atom of iron has a dipole associated with it, a little north and a little south. Well, now we know that a little north and a little south can also be associated with a, a current loop, a little loop of current. So let's suppose that we got all the atoms that I could represent as current loops. Suppose I got them all aligned so that they were spinning the same way. Okay? So this is what it would look like. Each of that represents one atom. Okay? And that atom has a north and a south pole, and I can I can represent that with a current loop that goes clockwise. And so the north pole would be pointing into the board, the south pole out of the board. And I get them all lined up so that they're all going around clockwise. Now <laughs> Uh, let's look at what happens inside the iron. If I look inside the iron, say here, this atom has current going up and this one has current going down. They cancel. If I look here, this one has current going to your left, this one has current going to your right, they cancel. If I look here at a, at a corner, this one has current going up and to the left, down and to the left, down and to the right, up and to the right. They cancel. They cancel everywhere, except on the edges. On the edges, there's nothing to cancel that little current loop, and so it looks like I've got current on the edge. There, and 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 there. And there, and there, and there. Okay? Everywhere else it cancels. So what that looks like, that hunk of iron, looks like a current loop around the outside of the metal. Now, this piece of iron, if it were magnetized, doesn't really have current going around it. But it appears to, because all of those little atoms are lined up so that their current loops are not canceled. We call that magnetization current. Now, I couldn't get through that without smiling and a little bit of chuckling, because in the old days when I was younger, I had a great big box of tennis balls, and I would throw out tennis balls to everyone in the class, and you'd all get up and you'd turn the same way. And then I'd get up on the tables and jump from table to table and show you how the current canceled at different places. Well, a couple of years back, I was jumping from table to table, heavy as I am, and I had a little problem with my shoe where I had a little nail head that was sticking out. I jumped, I hit, I slid, and I came straight down straddling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and 
and class was over. <laughs> and for weeks, everyone would say, hi, Dr. Francis, and then chuckle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I feel it. Okay.